Welcome back to another video, everyone. A few days ago, I got the final Platinum Relic in Crash Warped, which means I've now Platinumed every level in the Insane Trilogy. Now, with Crash 1 and 2, I ranked the worst levels. They weren't the levels that had the most strict times, but they were the levels that were just terrible to get through. Like Stormy Ascent. That time isn't too bad, but the level... But looking back on Crash Warped, there weren't as many levels that stood out to me as being terrible, so it was a bit more difficult to rank these. That being said, I think the five that I have chosen are a pretty good pick. I wouldn't like to do these ever again. At number five, we have Ski Crazed. Ski Crazed is a combination of a tricky level with a fairly tough time to beat. The jet ski is actually one of the vehicles that controls quite well in my opinion, uh, but this level is full of moving bombs and there's loads of crates surrounding those bombs that you need to pick up. So even though the vehicle actually controls well, unlike some of the others in the Insane Trilogy, it's still quite tough. There's so many crates that you get to a point where the timer completely stops all the way up until you finish the level. It's tricky, but there is room for error. If you miss one of the double crates off the ramp, it's still possible to get platinum if you're fast enough. Definitely the hardest jet ski level in the game, in my opinion. Some people would say it's hot cocoa, but my experience with hot cocoa was not bad at all. That was a fun level. That was one of my favorites to platinum in the entire game. It was just about finding a route and pulling it off. Moving on at number four, we have Future Tense. Spoiler alert, this is the only on-foot platforming level on the list, which might be saying something. Future Tense was a brand new DLC level that they added to the game after release. It's a medium length level that ramps up in difficulty as it progresses. The beginning is fairly straightforward, but as you get to the rockets firing at the wall, the disc platforms, the final platforming section, it suddenly becomes a lot more difficult. The mid-section of this level is where I spent most of my time. I struggled to retain my Accu masks up to the third one, so I could never get the invincibility. But when I started getting that down consistently, the Platinum followed shortly after. Genuinely a really fun and challenging level, with a pretty tough time as well. You can easily lose a Platinum if you take too long on that final section. But this this is the only level, I'd say, on the list that I wouldn't mind doing again. At number three, we've got Rings of Power. I'm not the biggest fan of how the plane controls in the Insane Trilogy. Now, I wasn't using the brake function in this level because at the time I didn't know it was a thing. But even with that, this level is still rough. The time in this level doesn't play around either, and that last section of rings is a pain in the ass to get through. To get the platinum time, you have to make use of the speed boost from spinning through the rings, and toward the end, with how fast you're going and how the plane turns, it's so easy to miss the rings entirely. You have to purposely slow down by not grabbing the speed boost, but not for too long, otherwise you just won't get the platinum time. Again, it would probably be a bit easier with the brake function, and even then you'll probably still miss the rings a good few times. At number two, we've got another flying level, Mad Bombers. In this level, you have to destroy the five planes in 58 seconds. Now, if you follow any old random route that you come up with, you'll most likely be well over that time when you destroy the final plane. The time save here is to follow a specific route and start turning the vehicle just before you destroy one of the planes so that you waste as little time as possible moving from target to target. It can be quite tricky to destroy a plane before it flies past you, and in most cases that's going to result in a restart. Not always, but turning around does waste a bunch of time. It's just not a fun level to get a Platinum Relic on, in my opinion. But, at number one, I think everyone saw this coming, Hog Ride. This is a very early level in the game. I think it's the first motorcycle level, if I'm not mistaken, and it's terrible. There's a speed boost that you pick up at the beginning, and if you lose that at any point, you might as well restart because you'll need it from the moment you get it until the very moment you cross the finish line. There's one glaring issue with this, and it's the fact that the bike in boost mode has some of the worst vehicle controls I've ever used in a video game. It's nearly impossible to steer this thing the way you want to steer it without going way off course, crashing into a hazard, the ramp, the sand. It took me hours to learn the very specific way that you have to turn the bike in boost mode. Now there's three more motorbike levels in the game after this with the exact same controls, but they didn't appear on the list because those levels don't require you to maintain the boost until the finish. It baffles me that they made three good and fair motorbike levels, but with this it's almost like the time that they set for this was a mistake. If it was just a few seconds longer, it would have allowed you to lose that boost and still have a chance at getting the platinum. And I know platinums are supposed to be difficult, 
but when all of that difficulty is due to how bad the handling of the bike is, they should have increased the time limit. Either that or you just fix the controls and then it's a bit more fair. It's a short level, but some of the hazards that you need to get through with the boost mode are ridiculous. Like this police car where you have to go around it, but not in the sand because you'll lose the boost. You have to pick up the three crate and then weave in between and it's terrible it, that's the worst part of the level again to make the level better they could have just increased the time to match the difficulty of the other biking levels this is the only level that really stood out to me in the third game and i would also say it's the most difficult platinum relic in the insane trilogy because at least with stormy ascent you have full control over crash and you can get good with this you have no option but to control that bike, and the bike has a mind of its own. Stormy Ascent took me hours to Platinum, and so did Hog Ride, but Hog Ride is a 30 second level. Doing a 30 second level over and over again for hours was mind numbing. Would the Insane Trilogy Platinum Relics beaten? I'd say Warped was the easiest overall. Crash 1 was in the middle, and Crash 2 was definitely the most difficult. Warped just had so many easy levels in comparison. There were, I think, two videos where I just did the entire Warp Room. I think I did Warp Room 1 and Warp Room 5 in, the in, in one video. Crash 1, again, was in the middle. I would struggle with a lot of the levels, but a lot of times when I finished them, I would just end up with a Platinum. With Crash 2, nearly every level reminded me how bad I was at the game. That being said, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the rankings and the insane platinum relic series next I'll be platinuming crash team racing and eventually crash 4 which is probably gonna be worse than all of them combined thanks for watching definitely subscribe if you're new here and I will see you all in my next video